1. Experimental features used to be a feature you could enable in the Terraria config file. Before 1.4.0.1, this would allow world seeds and texture packs to be used, but after the update, they just don't do anything anymore. You can still change the setting in the config file if you want, though, even if it does do nothing. 2. Unlike the Muramasa, which was made to be curved in 1.4.4, making it look 10 times cooler, the regular katana didn't get that treatment, sadly. 3. In the 1.2.4.1 changelog, the Flareon was erroneously referred to as the Flailron, a slightly different portmanteau of the same nature. 4. Aggro basically just increases or decreases the distance mobs will aggregate onto you from, and it doesn't actually increase any innate targeting priority at all. 5. When you use the beastry, you're able to use aliases of certain bosses, as it's easier to search these instead of using long names. A few examples of these are EOC for Eye of Cthulhu, Waf for Wall of Flesh, Fairy for the Empress, Cthulhu for the Moon Lord, surprisingly, and Mech Boss for the Mech Bosses. 6. The beastry entry for the Salamander refers to it spitting highly corrosive acid, but it actually inflicts poison, not acid venom, probably because acid venom is way too powerful for a pre boss enemy. 7. Big spiky hornets take up 1.16 NPC slots, while little spiky hornets take up 0.78 NPC slots. This number is yet different for the other varieties, stingy hornets, leafy hornets, honey hornets, and fatty hornets. Why these specific numbers? No clue. 8. The hard mode dungeon is referred to as the hard mode dungeon because its contents used to be unlocked in hard mode. Literally. If you had enough balls, you could get a tactical shotgun right after the wall of flesh. Of course, this only took a few days to be changed to what it is currently in update 1.2.0.3. 9. Candles are waterproof if you already place them, but they extinguish themselves if you hold them underwater. 10. The Basilisk Mount glows at 20% the intensity of a Shine Potion if you're below 27 feet underground. 11. The peak players generated from the Terraria 1.4.4 update was 115,063, much higher than the Don't Starve Together's crossover peak of 84,904, but much less than the 489,000 from the drop of 1.4 itself. 12. As far as I can tell, the most viewed Terraria video as of the 30th of October 2022 is Jay-Z Boy Stickman vs. Plantera, clocking in at 12.1 million views. 13. Lizard power cells are craftable in the 3DS version for some reason, and apparently Mobile had that crafting recipe too at one point, before it was removed, of course. 14. The Rainbow Rod used to be almost twice as expensive before 1.3, though that didn't stop it from still sucking in 1.3. Thankfully they fixed it. 15. In Terraria 1.0, the ocean originally did not have a guaranteed chance of spawning on both sides of the world. 16. In Terraria 1.4.4, there was a bug where oceans would be randomly drained during gameplay. This was fixed in Terraria 1.4.4.5, but it continued to plague console players until a few days ago when the patch rolled out for them. 17. The hardest block to mine in Terraria is the Chlorify Ore, requiring 3 strikes from even the strongest pickaxes. The most disproportionately strong block to mine is the Tombstone, however, as it can be mined with any pickaxe. Yet it takes 10 strikes to mine with a copper pickaxe. If you ever cleaned up an arena in an early game, you'll know how annoying this can be. 18. Luminite Bullet has the lowest velocity of any bullet at 2, but it has the second highest velocity multiplier of any bullet just after high velocity bullets. This effectively negates the extremely low base velocity. 19. I also got to say that the high velocity and maybe the exploding Illuminite bullets are the only bullets in the game that look like, you know, actual cartridge bullets, like in real life. 20. Before 1.4, the Nebula armor would release Nebula orbs from any projectile, including minions, making it extremely easy to stack the hell out of them passively. This was extremely broken for farms like this one made by Mappy Gaming. 21. This is kind of an addendum to this video. Oysters are grab bags like crates, but the crate potion doesn't buff their drop chance. It actually hurts the drop chance because it takes up chance originally belonging to fish like an oyster. The luck effect also doesn't affect grab bag drops, so it's completely pointless to drink a luck potion while opening oysters or, you know, crates or basically anything, really. 22. The candy corn rifle has the lowest velocity of any gun, despite being nowhere near the bottom of the gun velocity chart. This is because, unlike bullets, the candy corns the gun uses don't provide the 2 times velocity multiplier that bullets do, meaning the 14 velocity the candy corn gun gets is less than the lowest possible gun velocity, which is 18 from the flintlock pistol and musket balls. 23. Put a cheap chest lock on a biome chest with all your friend's stuff in it. You will now require another biome key to open it again, probably pissing off whoever's person's stuff is still in that chest. 24. Unsurprisingly, helium in real life does not give off a rainbow color when fluorescing, but hey, it still looks cool as hell in Terraria. 25. And finally, the bubble gun gains 20 armor penetration and get fixed boy and don't dig up seeds, 
but it also loses 65 of its 70 damage as it becomes a pre-harmed weapon. The fledgling wings are the same speed as walking when moving horizontally, and even then, they can only fly for 25 ticks, or just 0.42 seconds. Speaking of really bad horizontal speed, the bat wings and mothron wings originally didn't have any horizontal speed bonus, meaning they flew at 15 miles an hour, the same as the fledgling wings. This made them super slow in 1.3. The chance of a coin portal spawning from a pot varies with the bomb where it is found. It is rarest in forest and lizard pots in pre-hard mode with a 1 in 500 chance. Inversely, they are most common in pyramid pots, where they are 4 times more common, at a chance of 1 in 125. Similarly, there's a complicated and obscure way the game determines other pot drops like hearts, glow sticks, ammunition, healing potions, and money. Did you know that pyramid pots drop 10 times the money of a forest pot? Because I didn't. Maybe one day I'll make a video on this. Back in episode 16, I made a point about how in 1.4.4 they respired the Muramasa to be curved, but they left behind the Katana and Cobalt Sword, which are both Japanese swords. Well, in 1.4.4.9, the Katana finally got its well-deserved respray, making it look a thousand times less lame. The Cobalt Sword, though, didn't get a respray, instead just being elongated. I guess we didn't need a second curved blue sword in the game lest we create some confusion among the player base. The sparkles emitted by the True Knight's Edge on enemy hit only have 6 points, but the True Excaliburs have 8. Still better than the Terror Blade and Excalibur though, which only have 4 points. The ending hooks of the gem grappling hooks all look visibly different from one another, just slightly. This isn't just on the sprite though, it shows up on the hook where it's actually used as well. Boulders were crafted at the Tinkerer's Workshop, but were moved to the Heavy Workbench in 1.4. Makes sense to me, you don't really carefully tinker a boulder, don't you? The Truffle Worm is rare and savory according to the Beastry entry for Duke Fish Run. Seems believable to me. The shards spit out by the Crystal Serpent deal 80% of the base damage of the actual weapon. Unlike the main bolt, these projectiles are affected by gravity. Despite the Terror Blade's projectile being changed from a beam to the screen Ultra Slash, the projectile itself is still called the Terra Beam. In 1.4.4.9, the Pwn Hammer sprite was made very slightly longer. Luminite Arrow's tooltip is shooting them down at the speed of sound, a pretty obvious reference to the Sonic franchise. However, if you shoot the Luminite Arrows from a hasty Phantasm, which is the bow with the fastest velocity that is affected by ammo, the arrows will only fire out at 428km an hour, or around Mach 0.35. That's just a third of the speed of sound. Meanwhile, a hasty Xeno Popper using Luminite Bullets would actually be supersonic, going at an insane 1,461km an hour, or Mach 1.22. Then again, it's a bullet, not an arrow, and the high-velocity bullets would be even faster regardless. Over to the updates, Crimtain bars have only gotten darker. The repaired Mana Crystal and repaired Life Crystals are furniture items that mimic naturally generating Life Crystals. Their held item sprites have a silver platform that is not present when placed, presumably to differentiate them from their functional item equivalents. The new Mana Crystal sprite seems to be a better mirrored version of the old sprite. You can observe the crack shifting sides right here. The Gummy Worm item obtained from dropping a Gold Worm into Shimmer seems to come in two flavors. I assume these are Cherry and Blue Raspberry, but you know, could be anything really. The Chlorophyte Shot Bow has three barrels, but sometimes only shoots two arrows. The Daybreak is slightly different than the Trapanian Spear in shape, with a little bit of differentiation in the ornamentation. The weapon that fires the most arrows per second is actually not the Tsunami, but the Phantasm. Even though the Phantasm shoots one less arrows per shot, it fires 3.33 times per second instead of 2.5, leading to a slightly higher fire rate from the Phantasm. It is not possible to lifesteal from NPCs to have 5 health or less, so basically critters. The maximum DPS from damaging debuffs on a single enemy is 1331, with 800 of that coming from the max Daybroken debuff alone. The divisions on the true Excalibur are blue and pink, but the aura itself is actually gold and pink. In the Nintendo 3DS version of Terraria, Life Force potions cannot be crafted since Shiverthorn is not in that update. However, they can still be found in Shadow Chests for some reason. Despite the fruiting body of the Life Fruit clearly being the Golden Heart, the green shell is still visible in the picked final product. The tax collector has a quote wishing for it to be raining gold coins. I can't imagine that'd be pretty considering that those things weigh like a ton each. The slowest projectile in Terraria is a magnet sphere going through honey. There is a 0.0073% chance for a silt or slush block to yield an average of 1.2758 platinum coins on average. This averages out to 90 copper coins per silt or slush block, inputted for just this one drop type. While in the underworld, a hellforge requires at least a nightmare or crimson pickaxe to mine. When using the gold ring, a player is able to pick up a coin at the distance of 24.5 tiles. Before 1.3.2, the adamantite mask didn't have the two feathers or spikes or whatever that it has nowadays. The Frost Brand and Beam Sword are known for making this sound when their projectiles are ready to fire. 
However, this was removed in 1.4.4 when the projectile cooldowns were reduced significantly. The Enchanted Sword and Star Fury still make this sound though. The Knight's Edge originally didn't have holes, instead looking like a semi-tattered blade of grass. The Spectre Pickaxe used to be significantly slower than the Pickaxe Axe, making only 6 swings per second versus 8.57 for the more easily obtainable Pickaxe Axe. Sure, it had plus 3 range, but was it worth it? In 1.4.4 though, they buffed it, so the Spectre Pickaxe is only 0.5 swings per second slower than the Pickaxe Axe. Is it still worth it? Mm, nah. Palladium is not orange in real life, but Palladium 2 Acetate, a compound of Palladium, is orange. This is similar to Cobalt, where pure Cobalt is not blue, but Cobalt 2 Oxide Aluminum Oxide is. This makes the very useful Cobalt Blue pigment. Regardless of map size, Titanium and Adamantite spawn very slightly before the Lava Line in the Deep Caverns. It is still advisable, however, to only search the Lava Caverns for these rare ores. Okram drops 10 to 38 Adamantite ore on its defeat, while it requires 10 Adamantite bars or 50 Adamantite ore to summon. This is a net deficit. Before 1.2.3, you could use a Palladium Drill to mine Adamantite or Titanium, for some reason. This was unique to the Palladium Drill, and not to the Cobalt Drill as well. While this was relatively quickly speedily reverted on PC, its functionality is still retained by the Palladium Drill on the 3DS version. When shitting right after consuming a Golden Delight, you will excrete 141 blocks of poo, or 1,128 cubic feet of poo. Youch. Poo also protects you from fall damage, which is somehow worse. The Glowing Moss types encompass all fluorescent noble gases found in nature, those being Helium, Neon, Argon, Xenon, and Krypton. Terraria is yet to add the cancer-causing Radon and the synthetic Oganesson Moss types of the game, however. The biome background for the dungeon shows a dungeon using green dungeon bricks. In 1.4.4, the slap hand was rather humorously given its own sound effect in slapping things. <laughs> Neat, huh? When the gender change potion is used, the player is encased in helix of red and blue orbs before the change is made. And no, they're not pink. From the moon phases, we can determine that Terraria takes place in the northern hemisphere, as the moon grows or waxes from the right side. This is how it works in the northern hemisphere in real life. In the southern hemisphere, it is inverted. The Rocket 1 is referred to as Ichishiki Roketodan in Japanese, which means Type 1 Rocket. In Chinese, they call it Chu Ji Huo Jian. They use the character Chu, the character meaning first, basic, or beginning instead of one, so it literally translates to first tier rocket or basic tier rocket. Every other language simply uses the familiar Roman numeral system instead of specifying it as type or tier. At release, the only rarities in Terraria were white, blue, green, orange, and light red, with light red being unobtainable. And finally, rarity names are quite arbitrary. They're not actually named in-game. Today, the Terraria wiki has very concrete names for all the rarities through all languages, but previously they were all over the place. Today's light green was called green, while today's lime was called light green. Pink was called magenta, light purple was just regular purple, and light red was just regular red. All arrows that inflict a burning debuff, whether that be frost burn on fire or cursed flames, show a backwards burning flame instead of an arrowhead on their sprite. The magic quiver is supposed to increase knockback of bows by 10%, which is a buff. However, prior to 1.4.4.1, it would increase the value, but then round down the value, which would actually make some weapons lose knockback. This has since been fixed, because that was really stupid. Spikes and wooden spikes were originally very difficult to mine, taking 12 hits from a copper pickaxe and 7 from a nightmare pickaxe to mine it. In modern versions of Terraria, they have since been changed to use the same hit points as a dirt block. Effectively, they just made spikes 8 times less durable. Cactus pickaxes have an extra range point that a copper pickaxe does not have, but have a mining speed that is very slightly slower, 16 versus 15. They're also worth 4 times as much. The grenade and sticky grenade both do the standard 60 damage, but for some reason the bouncy grenade's gotta have an extra 5 damage. Why? Who knows. Similarly, dynamite has a damage of 250. Now, that's a lot of damage. However, the moment you strap that same stick of dynamite to a cute, fluffy, innocent bunny rabbit, it gains 100 damage. Hmm. In Chinese, shroomite is called mogu kuang ding, literally meaning mushroom or ingot. Seems legit to me. It seems like in the Japanese translation, or suffixes are not included in the transliteration. For example, shroomite is shiorumu ingotto, and chlorophyte is kuroro. However, adamantite for some reason still has its suffix ite. In 1.4.4, they changed pink gel to regular gel in the Molotov cocktail recipe. I remember mentioning pink gel's paradox of flammability in a previous uses information, so they've rectified that now. When you initially create a weapon, it chooses from a list of modifiers completely randomly. 
However, if it has a bad modifier, the game will grant you a 2 out of 3 chance to void the bad modifier and replace it with no modifier. This mercy mechanic is intended to make your life easier. I've showcased this in previous videos, but if you turn the minimum filter priority to very high in the config settings, a lot of the filters like the graveyard or solar monolith filter just stop rendering. The least amount of money a pot can drop is 40 copper, which is from a forced pot on the surface. Meanwhile, the maximum money a pot can drop can exceed the amount of money dropped by a coin portal. For example, a max jungle temple pot can drop over 28 gold. The special Twilight Lance arrows created by the Eventide only have a velocity multiplier of x1, so the Magic Quiver will actually make them travel faster. The Life Drain's projectile, so the wand that it would spawn, was originally called the Soul Drain, but has since been renamed to Life Drain. The Mannequin Sprite by default faces left, while the Wood Mannequin Sprite by default faces right. Oceans do not turn red during a Blood Moon, unlike all other pools of water. The Sanguine Staff's name is derived from Latin sanguis, which means blood. What is a cool name in English is much more plain in Romance languages like French, where it literally means blood staff. If you think I'm going to attempt to pronounce that, you are dead wrong. Sceptre sanguin. Repaired mana crystals do not naturally generate, but they have the same metal detector priority value as a life crystal or life crystal boulder. This places them above chests, but below cobalt or palladium ore. The Terraria wiki used to claim that the Arcalis was purple rarity before 1.4, and this fact was present in the history section of the article. However, this was not true, and if you look at any old footage of the game, like this Pedguin video, you can see the Arcalis is green. This factoid made it into both my useless information videos and a True Truths 1 Lie video of mine because I didn't bother to fact check it at the time. It seems to originate from this edit by Dodon on the 11th of June 2020, which added this tidbit into the history section for an unknown reason. This page has since been fixed. The Prime Saw sprite was massively improved in 1.3.5, giving much more definition to the saw teeth. Before 1.2.1.2, Precise only gave plus 1% crit chance and Lucky plus 2%. They were doubled to the current values in that update. The Corruption, Crimson, and Jungle key molds had a unique shape, but the Hollowed and Frozen key molds had a perfectly rectangular shape. The Death Sickle fires only one projectile per swing, but this has a limit. If you set your melee speed high enough, the Sickle will only fire every other swing, which is pretty trippy. Snail Speed is defined as any use time greater than 56. This means any item or weapon that can only be used less than 1.07 times per second will be defined as Snail. If you are running a Terraria low percent run, you can use Block Swap to mine ore, as this allows you to mine ores without getting the Ooh Shiny, Extra Shiny, or Photosynthesis achievements. All craftable hooks, with the exception of the Lunar Hook, are able to be made in pre-hard mode, and therefore use the Iron or Lead Anvil as their crafting station. The Lunar Hook, which is the only exception, is crafted at the Ancient Manipulator. When calculating tool speed bonuses, the ending value is always rounded down, which benefits the player. Greaves are a type of armor designed to protect the tibia, a bone, from attack. This is in contrast to the leggings, which are a type of full-leg clothing that aren't necessarily armor. Both types, along with pants, are common in Terraria. Likewise, the mantle is a long, cloak-like garment worn over the body. The nebula mantle should resemble Laneforce's prehensile cloak more than the wing-like object. Boosting with the Celestial Star Ward allows you to achieve a vertical speed greater than the max falling speed offered by the Portal Gun. It travels at up to 226 miles an hour versus 179 miles an hour for the Portal Gun. The ammo box has a rarity of light purple, a rarity typically reserved for rare pre-Plantera but post-mech items. As it was obtained from the Traveling Merchant in pre-hard mode, this was one of the few items in the game with an oddly chosen rarity. However, as of 1.4.4, the ammo box is now locked behind hard mode, so the rarity makes more sense. It should still be light red, though. In 1.4.1, the Night Glow's projectiles gained the ability to bounce off locks, instead of disintegrating. This helped with combat in tight spaces. The only bow that has a chance to conserve ammunition is the Phantasm. Shimmer arrows can only be obtained from transmitting wooden arrows or hellfire arrows. No other arrows will work. This is different from their counterpart, the Aether Torch, which can be obtained from transmitting any other torch. The old sprite for the Thorn Shock from only has four spikes, compared to the eight found on today's sprite. The difference in the blade size of the Cobalt War Axe and Palladium War Axe is rather amusing. Despite this, the Palladium War Axe is both faster and stronger. In 1.4.4, the Hellfire Treads were changed from a mix of the Lava Waders and Flame Waker Boots to Spectre Boots and Flame Waker Boots. This also caused their abilities to change. 1.4.4.9, the current patch, is the highest minor revision number in Terraria, beating 1.3.0.8. It is unlikely that Relogic will pull a 1.7 Mojang or at least 1.4.4.10 though. The velocity stat in Terraria is defined as pixels per tick. 
However, the pixels used in this measurement are half the width of a regular graphical pixel, since all image sprites used in Terraria are twice as large as their pixel art. For example, this 8x8 texture of a dirt block is stored as a 16x16 image within the source files. Cacti are much easier to cut down than trees. Trees have a hit point value of 500%, while cactuses only have a hit point value of 170%. This means it takes 15 strikes to cut down a tree with a copper axe, but only 5 strikes on a cactus. The longest single period of invincibility obtainable is from the Strange Brew, which has an 11% chance to make you invincible for 4 seconds. And lastly, real firework rockets produce an explosion roughly twice the size of a firework box's cosmetic rockets. Boom. Let's begin. Explosive bullets no longer inflict damage to yourself after the 1.4.4 patch. This is a good change for most people, though this does mean that Sweats can no longer use something like a mini shark to trigger Star Cloak for extra damage. The Chick has only had its damage value altered by 1 ever since it released in 1.3, with it being altered down 1 in 1.4 and then back up 1 in 1.4.1. It remains an unbuffed and underpowered yo yo, even though both the Amrock and Hellfire, both already good yo yos, were buffed in 1.4.4. I previously said that the magnet sphere moving through honey is the slowest projectile in Terraria, and that is true if we count constant velocity. The demon scythe is slower initially though, starting at a velocity of 0.2 versus 1.2 for the magnet sphere. Since it speeds up rapidly though, it does not maintain this speed for long. The Jungle Otherworldly soundtrack, which is playing right now, was originally released with the name Sky Guardian, suggesting that it was originally meant to play when a wyvern showed up or on floating islands. The Sergeant United Shield is the only boomerang that pierces enemies instead of bouncing off them, and the Bloody Machete is the only boomerang affected by gravity. The Hive Pack is able to increase the damage and armor penetration of the Wasp Gun by 5, alongside its regular abilities. The Blowpipe is actually the second fastest start weapon, being ever so slightly slower than the Dart Pistol. It still deals no damage though. The number of poo blocks you create when pooping is directly proportional to both the duration in minutes and the tier of the buff you have on you. Generally speaking, if you're farming poo blocks, the most efficient food would be the seafood dinner, which is easy to obtain and yields 26 poo blocks per poo. The Wall of Flesh's default speed in expert mode is 50% faster than in classic mode. In both difficulties, the wall will speed up over time as it loses health, though the change is much more drastic in expert mode, obviously. As the additions of the Axe of Regrowth and Zenith have given the Copper Short Sword and Copper Axe a final form, Perhaps in a future update, the Copper Pickaxe will get its own final form and allow you to fully upgrade your starting trifecta. Prior to 1.4.4, Icor darts ignored all immunity frames before splitting, meaning at close range, these darts were able to rapidly hit enemies for massive damage. This has since been rectified. In your Terraria directory within Steam Apps, you can find a Terraria changelog text file. When I last checked on this back in July of last year, it had a size of 410,233 bytes and took 6 hours and 5 minutes to read out loud according to worldcounter.net. Now in update 1.4.4.9, it has a size of 547,195 bytes and a speaking time of 8 hours and 14 minutes. This is up from under 6 hours reading time and 400,000 bytes back in June of 2021 or 1.4.2.3. It is possible to reflect platinum coins off a mimic, though they lose a significant amount of their damage. Large spread weapons such as the quad barrel shotgun and vampire knives will always throw one of their pellets or knives accurately toward the cursor to avoid the spread being too luck based. If the string of your yo-yo passes through any blocks, your yo-yo will lose 25% of its damage and lose 1 second of flight time per hit instead of the standard third of a second. This hit penalty can be especially annoying on low flight time yo-yos like in pre-hard mode. Before 1.4.3, the flying knife was able to be used simultaneously with both a yo-yo or any auto-firing bow as long as you had auto swing. This made it extremely useful in early hard mode as both a source of extra damage and flask debuffs like Icor or Cursed Flame. Past 1.4.3 though, this functionality was limited to just yo-yos or the post-mech Phantom Phoenix for some reason, which limited its use of it. Sadly though, it was fully killed in the latest patch. Before 1.2.4.1, the Slime Staff Summon did not require mana upon use. Being in an inner tube in water, riding a flamingo in water, being drunk, or being on a non-golden toilet all raise your fishing power by 5 each. Kind of a random addition, but perhaps useful in early game, especially the tipsy and toilet buffs. Chlorophyte bullets are unable to target Martian probes, likely to prevent frustration from players accidentally killing these rare creatures. When you receive the 1 15th chance to roll bacon out of a Picronata, you can only get one or two bacon. 
However, this chance is not distributed equally, as 14 to 15 times when you roll bacon, you can only get one bacon. Prior to 1.4, the Heat Ray was able to pierce many enemies, but it has since been changed into a single target weapon in exchange for receiving several buffs. Doesn't really feel the same though. If you look at all ham axes, the orientation they are facing is seemingly random. The Meteor and Molten ham axes have their flat hammer side facing down, but the Spectre and Luminite ham axes have their axe side facing down. Then there's the axe axe, which we don't talk about. The Skeletron Merchant sells both the Gradient and Format C yo-yos. Despite both being obtainable during any period in hard mode and being sold for the same price, their stats are vastly different, with the Format C being vastly inferior in every way. The only difference is that the Gradient is sold during the waning phases and the Format C is sold during the waxing phases. Why this is the case is absolutely beyond me. The Angler, being the asshole he is, wants you to get an i fish solely so he can stick it in someone's toilet. Apparently, the highest accumulated max score you can get in golf is 1 billion, which would probably be nearly impossible to do realistically. The Slime Prince and Slime Princess are shown to be married, as seen in the painting Royal Romance, as sold by the princess. It seems that in their principality, the Slime Prince is the consort, and the Slime Princess is the regnant, i.e. the actual ruling monarch. This is shown as the Slime Prince answers to a higher authority, while the Slime Princess is the higher authority. Their marriage is further supported by the Resplendent Dessert pet item, where they form the final authority together. The only painting which mentions Yorai Omer, or the Terraria developer Eurazer, is Princess Style, also sold by the princess. Mushrooms restore less health per item than bottled water, but the potion sickness given by mushrooms only lasts half as long. Most flares only inflict the On Fire debuff, even if their colors are different. The Cursed Flare, which is crafted using Cursed Flames, is the only flare that inflicts a more powerful debuff. I don't know why you would ever use that, though. Among all the paintings found in underground desert cabins, all of them are rather scenic paintings, or old stuff. Except this one. How did it even get down there? Paper airplanes follow the wind, but they are perfectly able to infinitely ascend without any wind blowing. Killing a prismatic lacewing using bees or traps does not summon the Empress of Light. The Snowball Cannon launches snowballs 29 kilometers per second faster than you can while just throwing it. This is the only way the Terrarian can lob a snowball farther than Minecraft Steve can. When placed, glow sticks will only glow for 5 minutes, versus a flare which will glow for 10 minutes. And lastly, it turns out that 1.2 ores like palladium or calcum and titanium do generate less veins in breaking altars compared to their 1.1 counterparts. This, combined with needing more of their bars to craft items, makes their items harder to obtain, which I guess is the trade-off for making those items better. Is this even useless anymore? The Ice Boomerang actually has the second strongest knockback of any boomerang, at 8.5, despite being obtainable in the very early game. It is only beat by the late game Paladin Tamer, which edges it out by a whole 0.5 knockback. Although landmines deal 250 damage, Terraria's damage randomization, along with NPC's built-in defense, means they cannot always be killed in one hit. As the sun sets on your first day of your playthrough of Get Fixed Boy, all your NPCs will instantly die. This is quite sad. It also means that it is impossible to obtain Terragrim early on the sea via the princess, as you can't get a blood moon before the first nightfall. On For the Worthy, the destroyer is 1,171 foot 6 inches, or 357 meters long. This is by far the longest Terraria boss. The Baby Truffle could canonically be the Truffle's children, as a painting of the Baby Truffle is given the name by Sun and is sold by the Truffle. The amount of confetti you can create is limited. If you use a zenith and a party flask on some target dummies, for example, there will be a point where confetti no longer spawns. This is obviously to prevent your frame rate from dying. If you set the velocity of a spear or short sword to a very high number, their range will become so large that they begin to act more like a boomerang. And, not gonna lie, it looks pretty cool, especially with strolling weapons like the Ghastly Glaive. There are actually four homing ammunitions in the game, those being the Chlorophyte Bullet, Nano Bullet, Chlorophyte Arrow, and Crystal Dart. The latter three can only smart bounce though, and aren't as versatile as the Chlorophyte Bullet. The Rotted Fork is called the Tinodareta Naginata on the Japanese old console version of Terraria, which roughly means Blood Smear Naginata, where Naginata is a kind of Japanese spear, 
This means in that version, there are two Naginatas, not just one like we have over here. Unlike the Japanese version, the Chinese version has a much more literal translation, Fu Cha, which literally is Rotten Fork. The true Eye of Cthulhu's idle noises and attack noises are slightly different. <coughs> The Terrarian is 5 foot tall without hair. If you use a jousting lance on the mount, you can get the mount to preserve its full running speed while going backwards, which looks kind of funky. The Shield of Cthulhu, like some other attacks like the Cactus Armor's Thorns or the Lawn Mower, does not have its damage attacks randomized like most attacks in Terraria. It always does 30 damage regardless of attack, barring crits of course. There are three melee weapons in Terraria which have a use time of 8, or 7.5 attacks per second. These are the Fetid Bognox, Psycho Knife, and Bladed Glove. However, since the Fetid Bognox have a 75% melee speed reduction, the Psycho Knife a 66% reduction, and the Bladed Glove only a 50% reduction, the Bladed Glove is theoretically the fastest melee weapon in the game, even if it's the weakest of them all. In 1.3, the Space Gun gained an upper fin. Due to their slow velocity, the Book of Souls probably has the most zealous homing ability in all of Terraria, with the ability to easily do a full 180 behind the player. You can click instruments as quickly as you want in Terraria, meaning with a high enough click speed, you're basically guaranteed to be able to annoy your friends. This is despite their stated use time of 12. The Falcon Blade has the light red rarity, which is typically reserved for early hardwood weapons. This is despite it being found in iron crates, which can be found before any bosses are even defeated. The metal detector technically drops from both the Lost Girl and the Nymph, as it is possible to kill the former in one hit from a long range with a weapon such as the Zenith. All hammers with 70% hammer power or more are able to break walls in one hit. After this, hammer power is basically a useless metric, barring the fact that you need 80% to break altars in hard mode. Converse to every other ore hammer which seems rounded, the silver hammer shading seems to implicate that the head has a square shape, not a rounded one. The Stardust Fragments tooltip is entrancing particles revolve around this fragment. There's only one particle. At least the Vortex Fragment is honest about its rolliness. In 1.4.3, you used to get all blurry when you sat on a mount, which was a bit out of place. In 1.4.4, they fixed it, so now you only become blurry when you decide to tilt on your mount instead of all the time. This de-blur is only temporary though as it disappears after a bit. It's really weird. When 1.4 first dropped, the pirate ship was insanely overpowered, with a speed equivalent to that of the Shrimpy Truffle in water, despite being obtainable before any hard mode bosses. This was nerfed to the next update for obvious reasons. You can increase the chance to rain by killing ladybugs. How is this related? I have no clue. Pigranatas are derived from the word pigron, a terraria enemy, and piñata, a kind of party ornament. When put together though, the word omits the enye. So is it pronounced pigranata or pigranata? How do you think? Also, it's called the Serdi dragonata in Spanish, so you don't have that to go off either. The pigron mount used to have four periods before the end of the buff icon, but has since been fixed to have a proper three periods, or an ellipsis. Despite the chain guillotines only showing two guillotines, you can actually have three firing simultaneously, if one is retracted. Four enemies lack beastry entries, those being the Pirate's Curse, Spiked Slime, Golden Slime, and Jungle Slime. It is because these enemies are impossible to spawn in certain types of worlds. The Timeless Traveler set and Floret Protector set are the only two of the Journeys and Vanity Contest winners to not have sprites for both available genders. The beetle husk is the only non-brown thing that drops from the jungle temple. Seriously, everything else is brown or in some shade of brown color. Geysers fire every 3.33 seconds or 200 ticks. If you set the damage value of any weapon to zero, it will show up similarly to a non-weapon, as it won't display any damage-related stats. However, if that weapon fires ammunition, it can still deal damage, as long as the ammunition still has a damage value, that is. If you set both to zero, the projectile will simply pass through the enemy. Shimmer is finite until defeating Moonlord, as it cannot be placed in a bucket until post-Moonlord. It also cannot be duplicated using a setup similar to this, as that has since been fixed, and pumps no longer duplicate liquid either. In this case, it is truly finite. On expert mode, Golem drops triple the beetle husks he does in normal mode, meaning that you are guaranteed a beetle set on your first fight if you play on that difficulty or higher. The 3DS version of Terraria has a content version between 1.2.1 and 1.2.4. For example, it includes Duke Fishron, who was added in 1.2.4, but not the Lizard Furnace, which was added in 1.2.3. It even includes sub-1.3 features like bonus drops from slimes or frost moon and pumpkin moon banners. 
On mobile version, all Aukram trophies became limited to cultist trophies in 1.3. Quite weird considering Aukram is a pre-Plantera boss. Even weirder is that this change didn't take place on console until 1.4, and console players only got 10 gold instead of a limited cultist trophy. Since Terraria fishing probability is calculated via integer division, each rarity tier's probability graphs come out looking like this staircase instead of a smooth linear line. You might remember this type of graph from your Algebra 1 classes. The texture pack I use is called Foundry and Alchemy, and the shaders are fancy lighting and lights and shadows. They are always in the description. The Nettle Burst used to have a descriptive tooltip, summons a thorn spear, but after it was given 10 armor penetration in 1.4.1, it was instead changed to show that instead. The Dungeon Guardian's Beast Tree entry only requires you to defeat Skeletron to get it. The Blood Rainbow only rains clouds if you have Blood and Gore off, which looks kinda unique too. And finally, your capacity to lifesteal is slightly lower in expert mode versus normal mode, 30 per second instead of 36 per second.